Our relationship with the queer youth community goes back a long time. We've been supporting queer youth activities since 1997, and the reason we're able to do that is because we have a lot of partners, and both individuals and regional foundations who've contributed funds to the community foundation so we can invest. So I think one of the things we've been able to do is raise awareness about the needs of the queer youth community and convince people that it's an, an area that's worth investing in. And I'm proud to say that since 1997, we've invested about a million dollars in the LGBTQ committee, and about 35% of that's gone towards youth-related uh, projects. I think the formal beginning of our organization's um, awareness of uh, queer youth needs was back in 1997 when we were invited to participate in a national partnership with uh, foundations around the country who were trying to encourage community foundations to be more receptive to uh, the LGBTQ com community. And as a part of that process, we conducted a needs assessment in 1996, 1997, which raised the issue about youth. And we conducted a, a similar, actually with a more in-depth assessment in 2001, where youth really were named as a priority community to be uh, addressed, and particularly Latino youth. Well, you know, when people, t people think about foundations, they think about us giving money. But um, we don't have a lot of money to give. So one of the other things that I think we could do to continue to support this community, especially youth, is to um, do one of the things that we've done before, obviously, continue to invest some financial resources. But also, I think what's important is really raising the community's awareness of this, uh, the youth community's needs. And one of the things that we did at the end of last year, 2013, was um, we named the Safe Schools Project uh, at the task force as one of the grantees for the Good Times Community Grants Program. And we did that very intentionally, and I, I think one of the good things that came out of that was not only some funds for the, the project, but more importantly, a lot more people aware of uh, what's going on with LGBTQ um, young people. Um, could they invest in projects that would help uh, address those needs? So I think that's a, a really good role for us. And I think another thing we might be able to do, and we've done before, is some convening of the players, particularly providers, um, to again make some connections and think about uh, things that they could do with groups like the Diversity Center, the Cantu Center, what do they do together with some of those groups to serve youth more effectively. Well, you know, that's a, what's my favorite movie? That's one of those questions that always stumps me because <clears throat> I can barely remember the name of movies that I've seen. I often watch the same movie twice. But I, I tried to think about um, what movie would I like to see over and over. And this is a movie you probably haven't even seen, given your age and mine. Uh, but that's the Yellow Submarine. You know the, <laughs> the Beatles' Yellow Submarine? And I said, why do I love that so much? I can look at it over and over. And it's because obviously the colors are great, the music's wonderful, but the message <clears throat> that all you need is love. I like that a lot. My favorite color, what is my favorite color? Well, if you looked around my house and my get-ups, uh, you'd see a lot of red. So that is a color that really draws my attention. And in terms of how it affects my work, you know, when I think of red, I think of energy, I think of passion and movement. And um, I think that speaks to me in terms of how I like to approach my work.